Let's return to our compound interest formula, but this time we're going to recognize that not all investments see exponential growth. In fact, some investments experience exponential decay. They decrease exponentially. Considering our compound interest formula, and we remember that if we have a 10% increase in the compounding period, the R is 0 0.10. And we see that the principal is being multiplied by 1.1, as many times as we have compounding periods, increasing the amount by 10% each time it compounds. Exponential growth. But what if we have a 10% decrease every compounding period? Then the R is 0 0.10, but we would subtract the rate this time. So for the exponential decay, we have a minus sign in our equation. And in this case, the principal is being multiplied by 0 0.9, as many times as we have compounding periods, decreasing the amount by 10% each time. And this is exponential decay. And thinking back to our general exponential growth and decay, this makes total sense. If we have exponential growth, then we know that that base is bigger than 1. And so 1 plus our rate. And if we have exponential decay, then our base is between 0 and 1. Thus, 1 minus our rate. It all makes sense. Example. If a car depreciates by 10% per year, how long does it take until that car is worth half of its original value? Well, let's start with our compound interest formula. But notice that this is depreciation. We'll use the version that has a minus in the brackets. Its value is shrinking. Let's rearrange to solve for t. We'll switch sides, divide by p, and then log both sides, using our power rule to get the t out front. And one final division, and we're ready to plug in our values. In this case, the rate is 10% or 0 0.1. And we don't know the P or the A, but we do know that the current value A must be half of the original value P. So we know that our ratio A over P must be 1 half. Now, some might plug in some sample numbers like maybe a equals 1 and P equals 2, and that's fine, whatever way makes most sense to you. And we pull out the calculator, and we get 6.6. .6. And that's the number of compounding periods, remember. So we have to look back. And we see that we compound each year. So that clarifies our answer. The answer is 6.6 .6 years.